Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and my friends, please keep your hands and feet inside the car at all times, hang on, and buckle up because we are going for a ride. Joining me for this week's guest episode is the one and only Jade Simmons. Jade is an internationally acclaimed creator of transformational experiences designed to activate audiences into becoming the biggest, boldest version of themselves possible. She is a world-class concert artist and also the CEO of Jade Media Global, a revolutionary live experience and global content distribution company specializing in 360-degree personal development and strategic transformation. We talk about so many incredible things in this episode, including purpose, what it is and what it's not. We talk about how faith is inseparable from who we are created to be. And we even venture down the path of motherhood to break off some misconceptions about how this most important role is not actually your purpose. Chains are breaking and people are being set free with the words of wisdom that are shared here. So my friend, please don't miss this one. And friends, of course, don't forget to check out the show notes to connect with Jade through her website and on social media and to get your hands on her life-changing new book, Purpose, the Remix. All right, friends, here we go. God's word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who he created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Jay, thank you so much for being here on the show with us today. I cannot tell you how excited I am. I have already done my running around and being so excited about the fact that I have you on the show. So our audience doesn't have to watch me do that. But uh, as we get in, um, I know that some of our, our listeners will be slightly familiar with you. Some of them will be very familiar with you. And some of them will have no idea who is this woman that she's brought on this week. So... <laughs> For any of our listeners who are not familiar with you, give us a little bit of an introduction. Uh, Well, first of all, thank you for having me on and for sharing your platform. Uh, I really appreciate your generosity. Um, Yeah, you know, I would say, honestly, Crystal, most of the stages I'm on, I would say 85 to 90%. When I walk in that room, they have never heard my name before. And so I like to tell people who often find themselves in that position um, that it doesn't matter if you knew me when I got there. It only matters that you remember uh, what happened in you by the time I left. So I, you know, I make my career today. I mentioned stages. Um, I am a classically trained concert pianist, and I'm an inspirational speaker. And I found this really fun way to combine the two things. So a piano comes with me wherever I go, and I'm brought in today by. Uh, some of the world's biggest, most superlative brands to speak on innovation, purpose, creativity. Think about it. They're bringing in an artist whose, you know, lifestyle is about creating things from scratch. Uh, And I'm brought in usually during times of transition or a lot of change or record breaking. They want to sustain that. And so companies will bring me in. I'm also uh, a wife uh, to my high school sweetheart and a mom to two, a 15 year old boy and a nine year old daughter going on 26, it feels like. (laughs) Um, And um, we're here in Houston, Texas. And in addition to being a professional speaker, I run my company, Jade Media Global, which creates content and puts on these live experiences. We say that we are transformation obsessed company. So we want any interaction you have with us, whether it's coaching or reading our books or um, partaking of any of our live products, we want you to leave not the same way you came in. Um, And part of that is because I'm also an ordained minister. uh, And so, you know, my faith goes with me wherever I am. I have a deal with God where that's concerned. And so, you know, as, as a believer, as a Christian, 
we want people to be changed by um, an encounter with God. And so I, I know that there's supposedly such a thing as secular and sacred, but I just sort of blur those lines as often as I can. <laughs> I am so with you on that. Um, as all of our listeners know, this is this is something that I reluctantly stepped into. I really kind of looked at God and was like, you want me to what? Yep. No, like you, you know who you're talking to, right? Like <laughs> I can't do that. And he was like, yeah, I know exactly who I'm talking to. Let's do this. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like a familiar conversation one he had with Moses I think back in the day yeah <laughs> yes yes I was like um like no, I think you got the wrong person he's like no no I don't make mistakes remember I'm like yeah but I do exactly yeah so yeah let's do this That's so awesome. um and we'll, we'll talk about tons of stuff you mentioned the transformation that people you know that is the goal is to have people have a transformation when they encounter you a transformational experience and that's been pivotal um along my journey as well and so I know we're going to talk more about that and you mentioned your books and I've got I've got my copy of your newest one right here with me and so we're going to get into tons of that but awesome. before we do all of that my favorite question to ask all of our guests and the one that really sets the stage for our conversation is how has your faith impacted your life? Well, um, I always say I have been blessed with an abundance of riches where my parents are concerned. Uh, my father was a civil rights activist in Charleston, South Carolina, and my mother has always worked in higher education, but she's the one that's most instrumental for the level of faith that my sister and I have. Um, you know, my my dad is who we get kind of our warrior mentality from, you know, you never get up, you speak truth, you say what's right, um, you take risk. And my mother has always made sure that everything we've done has been grounded in faith. And I was also blessed as a little girl because the churches I went to, uh, my main church for most of my childhood, our youth pastor emphasized relationship with God. And I meet so many adults who say, I never knew you could have relationship or, you know, I've been a Christian in name only, but it, it was only on Sundays. And it's mind blowing to me. I literally cannot relate because we were taught every day. What's God saying to you? You know, when we would ask a question or talk about things you want to do for the future. Well, what's God saying to you about that? So I grew up having to um, learn to differentiate between my voice, um, God's voice, the enemy's voice, society's voice. I had to learn that very early. And it comes in handy, I'll tell you, when I'm coaching others, because I never want to just be giving them my advice. Um, it comes in handy when I'm on a so-called secular stage, because I'm listening for what does that room need? Why am I here? So uh, I'll say this. I, when I was torn, because I loved studying the word of God, um, I was becoming a really good speaker, and I thought, well, maybe I'm supposed to be a preacher. I really want to be a pianist, but maybe I should be a preacher. And I remember asking God, like, you know, am I am I wrong if I don't go into ministry? And I felt very clearly that what I received back was that my ministry would look differently. It wouldn't be from behind a pulpit. Now I am behind a pulpit every now and then. I'll preach this coming Wednesday at church. I'll be the Mother's Day speaker. I used to be the women's pastor uh, at my current church. But the deal that we made is he said, Jade, listen, these companies, these organizations, they never invite God in because they can't, right? It's, it's an right. a-religious atmosphere, supposedly. And he says, but they invite you in and I go wherever you go. So Crystal, what's so exciting is I'm in these settings that are sometimes kind of stuffy and buttoned up. <laughs> Nevertheless, the, the Holy Spirit comes with me. The presence of God is in that room. People are having these spiritual experiences that they don't have words for and or there are other Christians in the room who go, I know what that is. I see you. I hear you. You know, they know the language. They they can pick it up. And really what they sense is that I'm doing my best to bring in something that's more than just me. And they sense that. Um, and so I, you know, when you say, you know, where has my, where does my faith take me? How does it, what's my relationship with it? It'd be much easier to tell you where I don't take my faith, which is very few places. It really does come with me wherever I go. And I think that is something that's so important, especially as women, you know, we, we love our men, but we're going to kind of leave them off to the side for right now, <laughs> especially as women, you know, we, 
we come into the corporate and I'm a, I'm a 13 year corporate veteran. I walked away from my job after again, another, like God was like, all right, it's time to go. And I was like, he no, does that. It's not like, <laughs> like, what do you mean? It's time to go. Like I'm supposed to do more stuff here. And he was like, no, you're yeah. done. Yeah. So it's, who goodness. Um, I totally relate with the whole people who don't understand having relationship, you know, people who grow up with the, um, it's, it's religion and it's, it's, you do this and you do this and you do this. Right. It's all That's works right. focused and not the fact that you've been justified by faith, you know, like your works, your works yeah. are good, but that's not what it is that our God desires relationship with us. Mm -hmm. And so I've had that. Um, I I'd say oftentimes I think God created me for comic relief in some mm -hmm. aspects because, you know, we have conversations and I'm like, all right, yeah. could you like knock three times or something, because I think that was you, but I don't want to, you know, like, I don't want to be out of line and, right. or I'll be like, God, I need you just to explain this to me and make it so plain. Right. Like, you know, me and you know that I will take it and run with it, but I don't want to be confused while I do it. You know? I don't want to be way out ahead of you because that, you know, the thing, the thing for me, Crystal, I think we're built similarly is that because I'm ready to move, like if he tells me I'm gone, and I think, you know, over time I've understood, oh, the reason he's not giving me the whole story is because I will run way out ahead. Um, so, you know, my my punishment, so to speak, but really it's his grace is that he only gives me now like half a step at a time. <laughs> um, and, and so, so I, you know, I'm proud that I've learned to be very quickly obedient, um, but because I'm a creative, I have to be careful that it's not my imagination and my creation and my ideas, nothing wrong with that. He, he gives us the ability to have uh, that, that kind of capacity. But what, what my prayer is, is I want your version of this thing yes. because I know it will do what it needs to do. It will serve who it needs to serve. It will make the money it needs to make. It will, it will you know, serve the people that it, it's designed to change and transform. Uh, and that's gonna feel a lot better than me just doing the stuff that I can do. And I can do a lot, right? I mean, and I and I hang with movers and shakers. We can build a thing, right? Yes. But yes. I want to make sure I'm building the thing that I'm designed to build. That is so awesome. And I know this episode is not, so that where we're recording this, it's not going to uh, air for a couple of weeks, yeah. but God is always like, uh, he winks at me all the time. And what you just said was actually a wink because tomorrow, the day after we're recording this episode, my daily episode on the podcast is talking about uh, Psalm 127. One, and if the Lord does not build it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then the laborers wow. work in vain. Mm -hmm. So yes. there we go right there. For anyone who was questioning whether or not this conversation was an anointed one, there you go. Yes, it is. So wow. <laughs> That's so powerful. I mean, you know, I, I say it so easily now, but it took me a long time to learn it. It really yeah. did. It, it's, it is that constant friction. Um, good friend of mine, Shea Bynes, who's sort of the mother of the kingdom driven entrepreneurship movement. Love Shea Bynes. Yes. Oh, love her. She's incredible. And, you know, sort of the, the part of her philosophy that wrecks us doers is this idea of, are you just kind of working and then putting a God label on it? Like, I'm doing this for a God. It's for your glory. Okay. But stay out of it. Cause I really want it to look yeah. like, <laughs> um, or are we really in partnerships? We have relationship, right? But are we really in partnership, um, with him? And so, when, when we discuss things like purpose, which I, I know we're gonna get to, that's my soapbox. It's because I really feel that we have kept purpose entrapped by the doing. Yes. And that's why we can feel so awful. Like I've been doing this thing for 20 years and I don't even like it anymore. It doesn't feel good, but I gotta keep doing it because this is my whole purpose, right? Or I'm a parent uh, and it takes up all my life. This must be purpose, even though I kind of am looking at this thing over there that I wish I could build or do, but I got kids, so I got to be purposeful. Or I got a husband, I got a wife. Um, and we, we get caught up in the doing. And because so much of our life is spent at a job, whether that's in the, in the workplace, in the home, we just assume, well, this must be it because this is all I'm doing. Um, and purpose is really about what's breaking out when we do. And when you get that, it's, frees you, not just to do more, but to do other. 
um, to do things that you know you were called to do, but you did the thing you were supposed to do or obligated to do instead. So you're right, this, because we can build and, and really humans are the only ones that have that kind of capacity, right? You know, animals can create shelter, but they don't build complexes, right? You know, right. They, they don't build governments, people do that. And so, man, if we're gonna spend all this time on earth doing, I wanna make sure that I am doing the thing that I'm designed to do that will create the effect I'm called to have. Absolutely. And that, friends, I know that that may seem like a very kind of strange concept. What do you mean my purpose is not in my doing? Because that's how we are. Listen, if that's your idea that your purpose is the thing that you do, um, I get it. I totally get it. Because prior to reading this book, Jade's new book, Purpose, the remix, prior to reading it, prior to being exposed to a different perspective on purpose, I spent much of my adult life going, God, what did you make me for? Like, I don't understand. I knew early that I was going to be a mom. Um, I knew that early, early. And I met my husband when I was in high school. Um, so I married my high school sweetheart. Uh, we had my first son when I was 19. And that's all I wanted was to be, I wanted to be a mommy and a housewife. I was the perfect, would have been the perfect 1950s housewife. <laughs> Give me some pearls. I will vacuum the house and bring you your bourbon or whatever. Yeah, scotch, whatever, what, you know, whatever it was. My husband doesn't even drink that stuff. But right, right. in my mind, that's what it was. I knew I was going to be a mommy and I wanted to take care of my babies and my family. And that's what I wanted to do. And I did that. I yeah. stayed home with both of my kids, but each time mm. when we got to a certain point, I was like, Oh, okay. And I yeah. still, Oh, deeply love my children. They're 15 and 21 now. So listen, I, wow. you know, we're now at a point where I'm like, I love you guys so much. Like go do your own thing because oh, my, my shift is now in this place where God is like, all right, Crystal, you've done your mommy stuff. You're always going to be their mother. You're always going to impart wisdom to them. You're always going to help them learn and grow. That's but it. Now your audience is going to be larger. And so oh, wow. it's not just for them. It's and let me let us put, put that in. That has to be put in context, Crystal, because I know that particular example of motherhood. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. This conversation we're having very easily. There are moms listening, going, "I can't hear this because yes. this is ah, you know." And I and I totally get it. And so I want them to understand: you're not listening to two women who are over being moms, never really wanted to be moms or don't value um, the, the role of motherhood or think it's any less than corporate or running a business. Absolutely it is, not. It is the most incredible primary responsibility you will ever have. But what I've learned is that motherhood itself is not purpose, it is a role. And the reason I know that is because one day your kids will be. 15 and 21, yep. they won't need you to change their diapers, thank God, um, or wake up in the middle of the night for potty training. I mean, the bags under my eyes are from those two kids, right? And I and I did like you, I stayed home. Um, for my second one, my first one, I was still in complete superwoman mode. I can do it all. Childbirth's gonna be about five minutes long. And then my baby <laughs> is born um, November, I'm gonna be back on tour January. So I didn't change anything. And do you know what changed everything? My son, who was 31 hours of labor, two weeks late, um, and then he had all sorts of colicky stuff afterwards. I got no sleep. Um, I don't think I officially had postpartum, but I was probably close. My mother retired early so that she could come on the road with us because I had this wow. tour in January. Wow. So I was breastfeeding on the road, in the dressing room, pumping. Uh, worried about leaking on stage. I mean, listen, I've been there um, and I'm also an overachiever. So I wanted to be not just mom, but the best mom, right? So I had all the books, but what we're saying is this, and I haven't said this statement yet. So let me say it. Crystal gave you the first part. Your purpose is not the thing you do. Your purpose is what happens in others when you do what you do. So it's not that when I say your purpose is not to be a mom that I've stripped motherhood of its importance. I've crystallized the part of motherhood that is purpose, which is what is happening in Crystal's kids differently 
because she was their mom. In that effect is purpose, right? So, so my purpose, even though I play piano and I speak or I preach or I write, none of those things are purpose. All of those things are actually the vehicles that my purpose gets to ride itself out in. So Crystal didn't trade mommyhood for podcasting. No, purpose just rides with her now as the host of the podcast. She writes books, it'll come from there. When she speaks, it'll come from there. And for me, I've discovered, because I thought it was to play the piano, and I was committed to that because I went to school for it over and over, many years, lots of money, all the different things. Um, and I realized it wasn't what I was doing at the piano. It was what was happening in the audience when it was me at the piano versus any other pianist. Yes. What's happening in the audience when I speak versus the last speaker or the one who's going to come after me. And what it does is it frees you of comparison. Um, it frees you of worrying when the season starts to end. Oh, I've been here for 20 years. I can't leave. Yes, you can. And you're going to be just as awesome in the next thing and it's going to fulfill you in maybe an even different way so moms we are not saying that what you're doing doesn't have purpose we're saying that there's purpose in that and that purpose goes with you in other places so do not feel guilty That's if you right. start like crystal did to feel that little nudge that says mm, i think there's something else and even i think there's something more there's nothing right. That feeling. So I had to get on my soapbox for that because I could feel the listeners in the future struggling in their seats as they heard that. But it's such a, an important point to bring out because, again, we feel we, and I say we, like the collective whole. What are you taught about purpose? What are you taught about, you know, purpose, calling? A chapter in your book differentiates purpose, calling, destiny, you know, like these things. Yeah, because I think we interchange them. Yes. We like to bring them all together and kind of think that they're all one big thing. And, and they're not. They have specific definitions. Wow. And, we use them in different ways. Like they, they all kind of work together they, they you know? very well. Yeah. <laughs> but they're not the same thing. And as we, you know, as our, our listeners are starting to maybe scratch their heads a little bit and go, well, well, if I've been thinking about it all wrong all this time, if my purpose is not what I do, but yeah. as one of my good friends, Rosie says, it's, it's not about what you do. It's about who you be. So and who who you be that goes with you everywhere that you go your purpose goes with you everywhere that you go and yeah. so as our listeners are maybe kind of scratching their heads a little bit to go well then if purpose is what happens in other people how how am I supposed to know right, right. I, that was me God tell me tell me tell me yeah. like make it plain speak to me like I'm a two year old like yeah. make it plain make it so plain so I know what I'm supposed to do. Cause we're always so focused on the do, what am I supposed to do? How can we explain to our listeners what purpose really, really is and how they can identify when it, when it shows up? That's crucial. One of the reasons I wrote the book is because I made that one statement about purpose is not the thing you do. And that it's what happens in others when you do what you do and people hand to God started quitting their jobs, uh, going into missions, building businesses. <laughs> and they would email and go, thank you so much, I quit my job. We, we had one uh, CEO and his team wrote us the next day and they said, so Jade's presentation is already having an impact. We had one of our top salespeople come in and give their two weeks notice. And they said, you know, we should be upset. And they said, but really we are so proud, right? That because of somebody we brought in, this person who we have grown to love and depend on, but we also value as a human, is saying they are now going to go out and be even happier than they were working with us. So, you know, there's no downside to it. What your friend Rosie's brilliant. What I say in the book is, you know, purpose is in the being. Yes. It's the being. Um, and so how do you identify it? I give some exercises in the book to help you. Uh, one of them is very simple. You're going to conduct some interviews. Uh, and a lot of times you won't even have to ask first. You can look around. I promise you, here's the thing. I don't care how many years you think you've now been doing the wrong thing because of what you just heard me say. Remember, it's not in the doing. You could even be in a job you hate and still be purposeful. So you're going to start to look back now and have this sort of retro investigation. 
and you're looking to see what happens when you enter the equation. So you want to ask the people who know and love you best, you know, um, why is it that you come tell me all your business? That's what I, that was one of the first questions I asked, because sometimes I wouldn't hear from friends for months and months and months. And then when they were going through something, my phone rings, even at five in the morning, they're calling. Um, and you want to ask that person, why is it, why am I the first call? What is it you're expecting me to say? And why is it you keep coming back? And you'll start to hear a theme, right? And you can ask somebody from work, somebody from home and in the family, people you don't connect to often, and you'll start to hear the same little through threads. Uh, for my audiences, when I get done, I love spending time speaking to them off stage, right? And they'll start pouring their hearts out and telling me what happened to them. And I started listening for a very specific theme. And the theme that I kept hearing was, I feel like I can do anything now. Or, um, you know what? There was this thing that was presented to me and I, I said no out of fear, but I'm gonna go back and say yes, or the next time it hits. So they were feeling bolder and they were feeling bigger and they were seeing things differently. And so I started hearing some recurring themes uh, in ministry and in coaching. I hear a lot about, oh, I didn't see it that way before, or I never thought of it that way. So I know now that my purpose is to activate people into being a bigger, bolder version of themselves than they were before. I get to do that through, here's the doing, for all of us doers, you still get to scratch that itch. I get to do that. I get to activate now through piano, through coaching, through ministering. What that also does, Crystal, as you do that investigation, you're asking questions about what, what has my effect been? Um, ask your spouse, why do you love me? You know, why do you put up with me? What's the stuff that, <laughs> yeah. that you love that you're putting up with the other stuff for? Why? And you will hear some of the same things start to go uh, here over and over. Write them down. Don't marry any of the effects yet. Just write them down. See what begins to recur. Some of those will, things will be really in the dead center of your purpose. Others will be other parts of the effect that you have. But then you'll see, you can grab all that stuff you just wrote down and take it anywhere. You yeah. can do it as a mom. You can do it as a CEO. Uh, you can do it as an artist. And that is where the freedom comes. What we're doing is breaking your purpose out of the thing you do, but then using it to allow you to do whatever else you feel called to do. I hope that's helpful. Uh, and you know, that's where the freedom comes in is understanding that our purpose does not keep us stuck in this one place, like in this one thing in this one doing, but that because purpose is who we are, it's because, you know, because it happens because of who we are, that we can take that anywhere and everywhere with us. And we so should, we should you know, have a goal to walk and operate and move and breathe in our purpose. You know, we, we are created as followers, as followers of and believers in Christ. It's our job to allow the light of Christ to shine through us, no matter where we are, no matter what we do, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. And sometimes that's harder to do than others. And I get that. Uh, but last night, as a matter of fact, my son and I were waiting in a line that shouldn't have been that long and shouldn't have stayed as long as it was for as long as it did. And <laughs> it was so funny because I started to get agitated and I was like, you know, because it's already late and I did my prep work and why is no one else prepared? Like I am prepared. Why is no one else prepared? And my son, my 15 year old son, mm -hmm. and this is, this is evidence, right? I, I learned how to look for evidence. But he sits there and he goes, mom, why don't we sing the song on the radio? Why don't we? Yes. Right. And I wasn't like, but I was like, you were getting I understand, you know, like I'm, I'm on my little creeping up of being really annoyed. And he's like, so mom, like, why don't we sing the song that's on the radio? Because wow. he and I both love music. Music is a huge part of my life. And he and I share that. And so he recognized in me that I was starting to get agitated. And so he's learned the tools that I've given him to help diffuse and wow. let's, let's shift our focus onto something else, something that we can enjoy together while we wait in this ridiculously long line for no reason, but it wasn't for no reason. It was so that we could have that time together wow. sharing and doing something that we love. And I, and I love the, 
I like to pay attention to verbs and you said diffuse and shift. And I bet if we were to start digging into your life and maybe even your son's life, we would see evidence of diffusing and shifting. And then Absolutely. you want to say, you, you see that evidence, you want to say, well, what happened because I helped diffuse or I helped someone shift? That's the next step. What happened because? Because that's going to show you how you're getting people from one place to the other. Um, and then when you see what's on that other side, oh, well, when I did that, we had more peace, we had more connection, we had more joy. In there is the breakout effect. And it might sound something like my purpose is to assist others to diffuse the tension in their life in order to experience more peace, more joy, more transformation. And there's such, I don't know, a pride you can take in knowing this is my freaking superpower. And yes. then you can practice it on purpose. I will practice emboldening people in the most random places. I do it at the gym, you know, where they're at 5 a.m. And I'm watching these ladies lift the same 12 pound weight they were lifting <laughs> six months ago. And I'm going, mm, you got more of you in that. My style is not to come over and make you feel humiliated that I'm lifting a 50 pounder and you're on 12. I will kind of tickle your curiosity about what's possible for you. And yeah. usually I use humor to do it. But then you're swinging those 12s real easy. They're looking a little light over there. How about I just, just hand you these 15s? Happy birthday. Right? right. And then they get it and they go, oh my gosh, I didn't even know I could lift this. Because a lot of times we need others to show us what's possible. Um, I keep hearing in my ear, Crystal, that there are moms, again, who are like, okay, I don't even go anywhere. I'm at home with my kids 24 seven. Nobody's calling me. My friends don't even have my number anymore. I don't even have anywhere I can investigate. That's not true. You can That's look right. at those kids that you have been pouring into and you will see the effect of your parenting in them. You think it is only for them, but I promise you that same thing you're doing with them is likely going to be affected with anybody else uh, you try it on. Now, I also, you know, over time, I work with women to say, let's figure out who your unique audience is, because what we're not, we're not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> we're not everybody. And then we want to free you of that too. But what I'm saying is, that effect is more universal than you think. So I, the word just is one of my least favorite words when we use it uh, in conjunction with ourselves. So I don't want any mom out there going, well, I'm just a uh, no, 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 no. You are literally, you don't know. You could be raising a future president, the person who cures cancer, or simply the person who also goes on to raise an incredible family with incredible kids. Right. So it's not even tying your, your poor kids down to having to be something great. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. right. <laughs> just want to be good humans. And that in and of itself is of highest purpose that we as, as parents get to play a role in creating uh, and, and curating and training and nurturing other good humans because we need more good humans. Uh, so please, if, if you think you spend the majority of your time at home and you don't have a place to check for evidence, I promise you there's evidence all over that home um, in itself. I don't care if you've been married 20 years or you're a single mom or a single dad, there's an effect that you've been having. What you'll have to do is take the time to breathe and look back to see uh, the wake that you have been leaving. And I promise you it's powerful. Absolutely. And, you know, Jade, while you were saying that, um, I, I have no idea who said it or even if I'm going to say it correctly, but the it, there's a quote somewhere that says something to the effect of, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. I That's mean, great. like, it, honestly, you know, we, uh, who was it? Gandhi that said, be the change you wish to yeah. see in the world. We yeah. so oftentimes misplace the importance of what we simply do in our day-to-day -day lives because mm -hmm. it's it's mundane, it's boring, it's whatever. It's it doesn't um, it's not revelatory for us because it's just part of who we are and what we do. You know, right. instilling in my children the fact that you know you are unique. And so is everyone else, you know, because we want to teach our kids that they're unique, but sometimes I think we forget to teach them that so is everyone else. So, you know, they think, oh, well, I am special. You sure are, darling. And so is everyone else that you encounter. 
So, Good. you know, bear in mind that, you know, people are so wonderful and so beautiful and they come from everywhere. And one of the things my older son, who's now a Marine, so he, he took all of this and just, and we knew he was like leadership material really wow. early on. He's like that kid who could, you could drop him into a room where he knows no one and nothing and give him about 10 minutes and he will be like running the show so. kind of person. I love it. I love and, it. And um, when he, when he went into boot camp, this is where I talked to him all through high school and I didn't know he was going to go into the Marines. He kind of threw that on me last minute. I was like, okay, solid choice. Wow whatever you want to do. He would, after he was done with boot camp, he had such a level of gratitude for the, the wisdom that I tried to pour into him and Mm -hmm. helping him to understand and see, because in boot camp, you're exposed to all walks of life. You're exposed to people from all places, all backgrounds, all religions, all belief systems, all everything. And the whole purpose is you have to understand and figure out how to be all these different people and come together and operate as a cohesive unit. And he would tell me like, mom, there were times when I would go to, you know, this person and bring them inside and just, you know, help them counsel them through so that we could, because if you don't get it together, everyone is punished, right? Everybody suffers if the whole can't get their stuff together. And it was so beautiful to have that feedback from him. And I just had to sit in gratitude with it. Like, oh, Lord, thank you that, that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean a lot of moms are like, okay, that is inspiration for the future. There's a day where they're going to actually possibly thank me. Uh, yes. instilling. You, you know, here I, I practice something. I, my husband wouldn't call it this, but it's just sort of my own little thing in my head. Um, I call it presidential parenting. And it was after watching a couple of presidents and seeing some of the stuff they did and said and thinking, I wouldn't even want my my kid hearing our president say or do that thing. So I want to make sure that I raise kids who, if they slip up and become president, I know that they're going to behave in a way that serves as a role model for everyone who's watching in the nation. And I want them to make decisions that are not selfish. I want them to make decisions that are for the better good, but I also want them to have a backbone. You know, I'm thinking about all the things I'd want in a great leader and I'm trying to, in different ways, instill that. Now, I will say my kids are nothing like what I thought my kids would be. If I could have built my kids, this did not the kids that I have. Love them, right? <laughs> but they are not what I expected. I'm hyper competitive, non-conformist, like you know, mover and shaker. My kids are much more nonchalant. They're just kind of, you know, it is what it is. And I'm like, who are, who are these? (laughs) How did they come for me? But it is, it is those kids who've been the opposite who have taught me, right. You know, I I, competitive and I remember my son going to his first um, karate class. And I I was living vicariously because I did 50 million activities as a kid, but never got around to doing karate. And Bruce Lee was like one of my idols. So I'm like, I'm going to finally get my black belt through my kid, right? And we go to this this first practice and the instructor tells them, okay, first one on the mat to run at this line, you know, is the winner or whatever. And the kids just start running. And my son's just sort of looking around, taking his time. And I'm like, run, you're going to lose, run, you know, and he gets there and he's not phased at all. And after practice, I'm going, why didn't you run your hardest? You could have won. And he just said, mom, everything's not about winning. And I was just like, get what? behind me, Satan. Who, <laughs> who taught you this evil philosophy? You know, because I had grown up, um, and not not because of my parents, just who I am wired uh, to be in terms of winning and com- competing. But I've learned through him that there's there was more to life than the achievement aspect of it, you know? So sometimes I think we're given kids who will then teach us a lesson. Now, does he need me to spur him? This is a time, son, you gotta push yourself. This is a time where you you gotta, you can't just settle for the comfortable thing. We we have that conversation a lot, right? Um, And so I think even like you're saying, as parents, we have to trust that we are built to teach these kids that they were given to us. Yes. 
<laughs> for better and for worse, sometimes it feels like, but that we're going to be able to see that fruit. That really blesses me to hear about your son. Also, I need to know what you're eating and drinking, because if you have a 21 year old and you look like you are barely 21, I'm going to need to get on whatever you're, whatever you're using lady. <laughs> I absolutely, I absolutely will share. I will say first it's good genes. Um, my mother will be 70 and, and just, just right after this episode airs and she, I look at her all the time and I'm like, there's no way you're 70. Like, wow. and, but then I have to remember like how old I am. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, the math works out, but yeah. you know, like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of it has to do honestly with the mental state. Um, a lot of it is the mental state. Um, I actually, since I quit my corporate job, um, almost two years ago, is it two yeah. years or three years, two years? I don't know. It's been beautiful since, and time is not really important. Yeah, to me. It's different. So, it's different. um, but I've actually um, not aged. I've gone backwards. I've youthed <laughs> since That's I left good. the stress and the um, and all of the difficulty. I loved my job. Uh, the last mm. six months of it were the most difficult, uh, just full of trials because God made me very, very uncomfortable so that I would leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But I have, I've actually, I feel like I've gone backwards. Um, and mm -hmm. earlier this year, I dyed the underside of my hair purple and my husband looked at me and he goes, you know, you're not 15, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course I, I am. Like, um, yes, I am well aware of that. And yeah. that doesn't have anything to do with why I dyed my hair. He's like, are I'm... you having a midlife crisis? Are you like, he's so much more like, is he more strained and and just you know I have a military husband yeah <laughs> and I'm just like oh I want to dye all my hair purple but then I might have to cut it off because I might not like it so I'll just yeah. do the bottom hmm maybe I have to I mean yeah it's like that so I'm um, with you hair for me is is the place where I express my yes for change so every two weeks I look completely different <laughs> which, which is a beautiful thing we have another mutual friend um Rashonda Pratt who has boldly embraced you know expression through hair color and I'm always like oh what colors are going to be next mm -hmm. like when we met I think when we met it was she hadn't colored it yet right after we met and started working together she went to blue and I was like oh <gasps> I love you even more now, you know, <laughs> yes. the best. I love her. Yeah. So, but you know, we, we going back to our kids and I honestly didn't think this was going to be a conversation that talked I a lot about, important. you know, I keep hearing it. So I think it's important. I think that we should go with it. Um, yeah. Going back to our kids, you know, we, you talked about how the kids you have are not what you envisioned, you know, that oh. you definitely would have would have thought probably more like mini you's, right? You know, that we have our own little mini me's. And one of the things I've learned with, between my two boys, so my oldest son is more of your like alpha type A, you know, um, he's driven when he, he figures out what he wants to do. What he wants, yeah. If he doesn't yeah. have focus, he's like a lazy bum. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like what happened to the drive and the, you know, go do. And he's like, eh, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing to drive at right now. Mm -hmm. My other son, my younger son, who's still at home with us, he is the most interesting individual I've ever met in my life. Wow. And it has been such a joy. His brain operates differently than anything I've ever seen. And I will ask him, especially as he's gotten older, when he was a lot younger, he had a lot of difficult problems um, expressing emotion sure. because sure. he had huge emotion and he was this little thing and he didn't have the words. And so, you know, it came out in some really, you know, not pleasant ways. <laughs> but yeah. once we learned how to put language around that, you know, we could, we could start to work through that. So mm -hmm. communication is another big, huge thing. Mm -hmm. But now, like I will ask him, how did you come to that conclusion? That's because it. his mind is wired in such a way that where you have, you know, logical thinkers who go point A, point B, straight line, there we go. And then you have some of us who do that sometimes. And then the rest of the time we're like, oh, look, squirrels and daisies, you yeah. know, and we're just, we're just all over somewhere else. His is more like, okay, here and here. But if I just go this way, hmm, this way is a whole lot more interesting. If I, you know, You'll get just, there. 
loops mm-hmm. and turns mm-hmm. everywhere. But mm-hmm. one of the the things I've been so fortunate to be able to recognize and so grateful that I have is how different they are. So and it's powerful and it's yes. intentional. It's, yes. it's finally intentional. And I think, you know, as much as I joke about my kids not being what I, what I expected. I mean, I thought my daughter would be pretty much the third Williams sister. Um, and then, you know, I, you know, my, my son is a musician that came out of nowhere. I wanted him to be, and he didn't want anything to do with it when I wanted him to be. And then randomly one day <laughs> started playing the piano, taught himself. And now he's like this incredible um, guitarist, right? And so, and even then he still doesn't want to do it like how I did it, right? He wants exactly. to do it his own way. But what I, what I, when I, as I was re-understanding what purpose was for me, it also affected my parenting in a very powerfully positive way. Because now, instead of asking myself, why are they like that? I asked them, why do you think God made you this way? Yes. Uh, because I want to begin to foster not only relationship with God, but a real genuine belief that they are not accidents, that everything about them has great intention. Doesn't mean we don't examine our weaknesses and look at our flaws, but to really trust in advance that because I'm not built like the alpha male, right? Or, or like my older brother, or you know, because I'm not as joyfully expressive as my little sister that's in our house my my daughter's like wow all the time right and my son's like man most of the time so <laughs> two of them are, you know it's like they don't understand each other at all um but i wanted my my son who at the time when he was probably the age you were describing for your son uh, he had the, a lot of that emotion too but a really straight poker face but he was internalizing all of this stuff mm-hmm. and a lot of times it would make him cry and he went through this little period where people were calling him cry baby and that stuff. And so we, I, we, I just said, why do you think God has made you so sensitive? And for a while I didn't have an answer. And then I remember one day he said, I think I'm supposed to feel things other people can't. Mm. Um, wow. And just having that context, you understand, takes this negative label of there's something wrong with you because you feel which I think it's placed on a lot of men, a lot yes. of young boys, right? And then if they they feel and they're exuberant, then they're toxically masculine. All these, it's like the poor guys have nowhere to go. We have to have a whole <laughs> yeah. on that one, right? Like my my kid still is like, I'm supposed to open the door or not? Like, what is it? Is it okay? You know, it's <laughs> yeah. a whole teaching we have to do. But, you know, even for my daughter who is extremely joyful, she sometimes comes in the room when everybody else is kind of chill and it feels like she's extra. And we have to work, and I tell this to my husband, don't automatically tamp her down. It might be annoying sometimes, but I want her to really know that part of her is designed to bring exuberance into a room. And I said, we don't know what she's gonna be designed to do in the future. She may be literally on assignment to dead rooms with stale, dry people in it, and it will need her to come in. If we make her second guess that now, she will in advance begin to not be who she's called to be. And I think that that is what happens to most of us in childhood. And then we carry that tamped down version of ourself um, into adulthood. And then we wake up and go, wait, why am I here? What am I doing? Because we were never really allowed the space and opportunity um, to operate. So you're right, that uniqueness, and you said it even with your own kids, yeah, you're unique, but so are they. So you've got to work to understand them the same way you're asking us to yes. understand you. That to me is how purpose uh, gives us meaning and gives us validation in who we are. If I know I'm called to be bold and activate, that tells me how to dress, how to do my hair, um, that I can speak up when maybe it's unexpected. I should never have to say, should I be conforming now? Because the answer is probably always no. Right. So purpose, once you discover it and uncover it, it comes with this whole set of like new wonderful rules you get to live by that allow you to be comfortable in advance in unexpected situations. That is so beautifully put. And so, and I truly believe that there are many, many, many people who need to hear that. And as you were speaking about your daughter, what came to mind was she's called to walk into the dry bones and wake them up. Like she is, you know, she is called to bring that light into the dark places. And 
I went through this huge struggle um, I, when I started my self-discovery process a handful of years ago because I was so negative and really just I, um, that's another thing that helps you age backwards is when you stop hating yourself and learn how to actually love yourself. Mm, that's another yeah. episode. <laughs> Ooh, that takes, that takes years <laughs> off of you. Okay. Let me just testify to that. Um, but I had, I'd grown up in this place where I was this, you know, really kind of big personality and mm. I wanted to be a singer and I wanted to be an entertainer and my very, very favorite entertainer in the whole wide world when I was a little girl was Tina Turner oh, and God. Lord, you put that woman in her big hair and her flashy costume and her woo, those legs. Yeah. Those legs. <laughs> my goodness. I loved her. I wanted to be her. Like I was young enough that I didn't quite understand the concept that you can't actually turn into another person. Like you, you have to be your own person, but like, I wanted to be her. She was who I idolized. And I remember there was one specific instance that happened that really just kind of put a lid on my dreams and desires to wow. sing and to be in front of people and to be big and bold and light things up. And it, was, it wasn't a harsh thing. It wasn't said with ill intent or anything like that. But the age that I was, the impact that it had, it made me immediately believe that I wasn't supposed to do that that I instead needed to be small and be quiet. And, and I went through much of my corporate career, a background player um, on purpose because I was comfortable back there. I was the sit down, be quiet, you know, sit down and look pretty and be quiet. But in the mean, you know, while we were in public, however, in the background, I was doing all the things to make all the people look so fabulous and fantastic. That's right. And when I started to get pushed out in front of people, I had a boss that did that for me and I did not like him at the time for it. I bless him now for it, but he wanted me to start getting out in front of people. And I wasn't ready to handle that because I wasn't ready to handle me because I still felt like I was supposed to be small and quiet and still, and, you know, please don't look at me. Or if yeah. you do, you know, don't think that an intelligent thing can actually come out of my mouth. You know, oh, God gave me this brain and I was like, <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess I'll just sit over here and use it for myself. So oh my when I started working with my coach years ago to get rid of all that, it was this, it was this beautiful uncovering, but it was, it made me so sad in so many ways because I came to this point and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, Crystal, you believe that God created all people and all things for his glory. And that includes you. And if that includes you, how can you sit here and think that you are worthless mm. and that you have no meaning and that you do not matter? And it, I mean, it was just this outpouring of God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You know, like all these years that I've spent like talking trash to myself because of, you know, all the lies I believed, like, I'm so sorry. And yeah. it was beautiful though, because it allowed me then at that particular point in time, you know, those years ago to turn and look at my kids. Yeah. and say, there's no way I can let that happen. I can't let you, I can't let the enemy plant the seeds of the lies that are going to turn into why you don't do what God created you to do. And mm. so I tell my husband all the time, I'm like, with the, with the younger one, I'm like, do not tamp him down. Like he has he has emotion now he feels like, and he'll watch, he's a creative mind. And so he's into guitar right now. Um, he did violin. He um, thought about piano. Uh, you know, he draws, he's, you know, yeah. he's the, the artsy kid. So yeah. I'm, but, and he'll watch musicals, you know, he'll mm -hmm. watch musicals and he's like, he's into not theater. I'm trying to get him into theater, but he's mm -hmm. into movies. Like, sure how the things work and all the things. And I'm like, yeah. my husband's like, why are you watching a musical? And I'm like, okay, you chauvinist male, please go watch your action packed movie. I don't want my son in title. Yes. yes. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But, but they're figuring, you know, creative minds are always creating and yes. they're always sort of configuring and figuring things out. Um, my son can't stand musicals, but he loves YouTube. And yeah. so he goes to a school 
um, that has different tracks of learning and he's in the audio visual track. So even though he's, he's an incredible performer, um, you know, we're looking at places now, old Jade would have said, okay, you go to Harvard, Princeton, you know, these three, and then, and you got to take AP, 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 honors, AP. I have come so far. <laughs> Once I kind of really understood, again, that the understanding of purpose changed my parenting. Um, I didn't have to create these overachieving clones. <clears throat> I just needed to help give them the tools to do whatever uh, they were actually called to do. And so as I watch my creative son, and I hear you describe yours, they just live differently in, in how they experience and they're picking things and that they're I kind of like that he might be watching the musical, but it's not even about the musical. It's like, man, the lighting. I like how they're yes. the, the cast stage. of characters, <laughs> how they interact. Yes. It's really powerful. And I think, you know, this theme of freedom keeps coming up in, in this discussion. Um, one thing I also want to do as we free people up to realize they've had this effect on others. Uh, some people who read that statement thought I was saying, oh, now you're you're only valid because you're attached to other people. That's not it either. I don't want anybody to be codependent. I have a lot of pastors, wives who are like, who I'm struggling with this thing, help me here, because I'm already <laughs> drowning and overwhelmed um, by all this stuff demanded of me. That's not what the definition does. When you When you really understand it, when I say that your purpose is what happens in others when you do what you do, what we actually just did was freed you from being tied to people and instead tied you to the purpose of the creator who made you. Yes. So what that means is Crystal can say peace out to the corporate job, even though she is there making everybody look good. Yes. Right? Now that one voice will say, oh, you got to stay here because everybody's depending on you and your purpose is to make them look good. No, my purpose allowed them to look good because that's part of my outbreak effect here but i get to now take that elsewhere i don't have to be beholden to people at any point in my life aside from our family which even then at a certain point the kids got to know how to be an adult right That's right you're gonna have to go and do their thing you will no longer have the excuse of i've got to stay here because my kid needs me right so purpose actually it allows you to see that no matter where you are as long as you are being who you are designed to be, you're going to have an effect. Absolutely. But you're not now tied to people because you have an effect. You must now stay connected with purpose, which for me um, is another word of saying, stay connected to the God who gave you purpose. Yes. And then he's gonna take you where you're designed to go in each season because the seasons are going to shift. You might have a purple hair season in your future, those who are watching and listening. Um, you might have a short hair season, which next week could be my long hair season. And thank God we can just <laughs> buy hair and put it in, right? So I like to, I, I think even the way that, that I um, express myself physically and, and stylistically is designed to let other people know it's okay to change. It's okay to change frequently. I think change is the most organic thing we can do. I think staying the same is actually a little more, we should be more suspicious <laughs> about that um, than, than change. So, you know, I'm excited that, first of all, for the work that you're doing and that people, I believe with this episode, what I want them to leave with is knowing uh, that there's freedom. There's freedom in uncovering how they are designed um, and there's no condemnation in the work they have been doing up until this point. There's no condemnation. You now though get to be intentional and know I can keep doing what I'm doing and have an even more intentional effect. Or if I've been feeling a nudge, I can explore that nudge and know that I'm still gonna be a meaningful, purposeful person. Uh, even if I leave somewhere I've been forever. Absolutely. Listen, friends, you know, God works all things um, together for the good of those who love him. So it, it doesn't matter what you've been doing up to this point. None of it's wasted anyway. Um, God uses everything. He's just, he's so incredible and amazing like that. Um, Jade, I want to make sure that our listeners know where they can get their hands on this life-changing book. Yeah. And friends, I say life-changing. Listen, you can look at mine and see all of my little <laughs> highlights in here as I've been going through and getting my mind blown by different things that Jade has put in here. So Jade, where can our friends get their own copy of this book? 
pretty much everywhere that books are sold. Amazon, if that's your jam, it's definitely there. And it's also an ebook form. And my favorite, it's an audio book form recorded by me. I wanted to make sure um, I put my voice to those words so you can hear the context um, and really hear the meaning behind uh, these big fat words around purpose. Again, I wrote the book to be a good steward of those little 20, 21, 22 words that I said earlier because I wanted you to have a guidebook um, to walk this out. And please don't be afraid that it's gonna say the opposite of what you thought purpose has been. You're still gonna find some reconciliation in there with how you've lived your life up until this point, but now you get to do things way more intentionally with hopefully an extraordinarily um, high level of fulfillment moving forward. So, um, I, you know, I like to put a little positive pressure on you and tell you that the world really is waiting uh, for you to have a purpose because when you start operating at your highest level of purpose, solutions are uh, in you that have been locked up for quite some time. And there are people whose lives, um, whose, whose quality of life, um, and maybe even their very life depends on you being who you're designed to be. Absolutely. Oh, I could not agree with you more. Um, so friends, I will have the link, uh, the Amazon link where you can pick up your copy of that um, down in the show notes. And then I will also have, I know Jade, you love to hang out on Instagram. So I will definitely have your Instagram link down there and your website as well so that our friends can connect with you when the show is over. I have a sneaky feeling that there are going to be a lot of them who want to do just that. So with that, um, I want to thank you so much much. It really, this has been, I mean, this has been, I don't want to say the highlight of my year, but I mean, it's been pretty We're awesome. So early. We're so early, but I, <laughs> it's I, so I, early, but so far, how about that? We'll say so I love far. It. I love it. I love it. It's, it's an honor. And thank you again for sharing your, your platform and for your, your candor um, and your transparency around your faith. I do believe that God is using people who have been unafraid in this season to admit their association with him. And I think there's reward in that uh, beyond what we can see. So thank you for that. Uh, it's it's my pleasure. Listen, it's a, I kind of feel like I didn't have a choice in it. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.